Hi everyone, it's Katrina. Number 10. The Noble Woman's Grave Researchers have been hard at work excavating the burial of a medieval noblewoman in England. The grave is about 1,300 years old and was found in Northampton. Archaeologists retrieved from the grave what might just be the most elaborate necklace ever found in England from the medieval days. According to the Museum of London Archaeology, the necklace is of international importance. The grave itself could even hold the most significant medieval female buried anywhere in England. It's not clear who this woman was, but the artifacts in her grave suggest she may have been an early religious leader. The necklace she was buried with included a myriad of opulent gems from all across Europe. Researchers also discovered a massive silver cross that had been placed delicately on her body. The cross is decorated in human faces, with each one cast in silver and given blue glass eyes. These may be representations of Jesus Christ's twelve apostles. The huge silver cross also had a precious garnet embedded in its center. Such an artifact buried with someone 1,300 years ago would typically suggest they were a Christian leader. But this was a woman who lived around 630 AD. And Christianity has never been about women holding positions of power. Even in the 7th century, women were typically excluded from church activities and never given any kind of authority. Researchers aren't sure if this woman was exalted in her community despite the church's harsh ideals on women. She may have even been a pagan leader fighting against the doctrines of the church. All we really know is that she was very important, perhaps even the most important woman of her time in England. Number 9. Lost in China The tomb of Duke Jing of Qin is the largest tomb that's ever been excavated in China. If you were to ask anyone what they thought the most impressive tomb in China is, they would almost certainly say the tomb of Qin Shi Huang, where the terracotta warriors were found. But the truth is that Qin Gong's tomb is positively massive. However, it's also a little disturbing. It was found in 1976 in Shanxi province, and it took 10 years to excavate. The tomb was built like an inverted pyramid, eight stories deep and bigger than most Chinese palaces. The tomb was for the 18th ruler of the Zhao dynasty, Shen Gong. He ruled between 576 and 537 BC, about 300 years before Qin Shi Huang unified China under a single ruler. What makes his tomb so exciting, creepy, and intriguing is that it was filled with human remains. Archaeologists identified 186 human remains inside the tomb. These weren't people who died of natural causes, either. They were victims of funeral sacrifice. This was a practice that started around 678 BC and lasted an entire three centuries. Rulers of China would have dozens of people murdered and buried in their tombs so that they could serve them in the afterlife. The horrendous practice was finally abolished by Duke Xian in 384 BC. And now for number 8, but first, it's shout-out time! I want to give a big thank you to Jade Repay Finnerty and Dale Leander Toller for supporting this channel. Thanks so much, guys! If you are new here, be sure to subscribe and join the family. We'd love to have you! Number 8. Neanderthal Butchering Site Neanderthals may have been a lot more efficient than anyone could have imagined. Recent evidence has surfaced of Neanderthals hunting and butchering massive prehistoric elephants. About 125,000 years ago, long before the earliest Homo sapiens were out hunting mammoths, Neanderthals were advancing as a society. They worked in organized groups to take down beasts the size of dinosaurs. Then they used the meat to feed hundreds of their own people. Evidence came from over 3,000 prehistoric elephant remains discovered in central Germany in the 1980s and 90s. Researchers dug up entire skeletons, random bones, and even found elephant stomachs. The extinct species of straight-tusked elephant stood a whopping 13 feet tall and weighed 13 tons. That's about the size of eight standard cars. They were the largest land mammals that lived during the Pleistocene era. Researchers recently decided to take a closer look at some of these prehistoric elephant bones. 
and that was when they found cut marks on the surface, physical evidence that Neanderthals carefully butchered these enormous animals. It appears they harvested not only the elephant's meat, but the fat and brains as well. This was all taking place at a single site for over 2,000 years, suggesting generations of giant elephant hunters. A single straight-tusked elephant would have yielded over 25,000 daily portions of about 4,000 calories. In other words, enough food to feed a tribe of Neanderthals about 25 individuals for three straight months. Co-author of this study, Will Robrex, called the elephants walking calorie bombs. Anyone curious what prehistoric elephant meat tasted like? Number 7. The Viking Great Army A team of scientists from Britain and Belgium have revealed some shocking new details about the Viking Great Army. This was the group of legendary fighters that invaded England in the 9th century and brought with them great destruction. The team of scientists completed a chemical analysis of material they found at a Viking cremation site in England. And, so far as we know, it's the only cremation site in the British Isles left behind by the Vikings. The dating of the site suggests that the people who were burned here were part of the Great Army. Cremation is an important detail because in the 9th century, England was firmly Christian. Nobody was cremated because bodies were buried instead. Cremation was a much more pagan type of funerary tradition. This shows that when the Viking Great Army arrived, they weren't too concerned with the local Christian customs. But the analysis of skeletal samples found in the cremation piles shows that not everyone burned here was from Scandinavia. Many of the dead were from England. This is a major discovery and something that could change what we know about Viking history. We already know the army arrived in 865 AD and launched a massive invasion of the British Isles. But discovering the skeletal remains of locals changes a lot. It means the Vikings accepted local dissidents into their ranks, swelling their army as they fought against the Anglo-Saxon kingdoms for dominance of Britain. Number 6. The Sanctuary of Mithras Archaeologists in Spain have found an ancient sanctuary dedicated to the mysterious god Mithras, who was worshipped throughout the Roman Empire 2,000 years ago. Archaeologists were excavating the Villa del Mitra, a complex of fragmented ruins in Cabra, when they came across the sanctuary, and they were shocked to find the remains of ritual banquets, vestiges of feasts that had once taken place inside its very walls. For those out of the loop, Mithraism was one of the most popular religions the world had ever seen. It likely had its origins in Iran, but it was quickly popularized by Romans in the 1st century AD. They took the lore behind the sun god Mithra and transformed it into an underground mystery cult. Within a few decades, Mithras was everywhere. People were worshipping in secret subterranean sanctuaries all the way from England to Turkey. And yet, despite its fame, modern historians still don't know the exact details of their religion. We know there may have been sacrificing involved, and that it had something to do with death and resurrection. But their religion was so secretive, no documents survive today describing its rites and passages. The archaeologists behind this discovery came from several different universities in Spain. The villa was first excavated in 1972 and subsequent digs in the 80s unearthed the remains of an ancient subfloor heating system. But it wasn't until just recently that researchers got to the bottom of the lost sanctuary. The building was improved in the 3rd century AD, right before Mithraism was defeated by Christianity. Do you think you'd be open to Mithraism if you lived in the Roman Empire? Let us know in the comments below! And while you're at it, be sure to subscribe! Number 5. The Face of Nabatea Saudi Arabia has just unveiled the breathtaking reconstruction of an ancient Nabatean woman. It took several years of painstaking work by skilled historians and archaeologists. The reconstruction was modeled off the remains of a real person, a woman named Hinat, whose tomb was found in Higra in 2015. She lived 2,000 years ago in northwestern Saudi Arabia and was buried in the ancient oasis city of Alula. 
But who were the Nabataeans? They were one of the most important Arab civilizations of the past two millennia. Their capital was the ancient city of Petra, which is currently Jordan's premier tourist destination. Petra was an international trading hub and an important stop on the Silk Road, where people traded spices, textiles, and medicine. And this was all facilitated by the powerful kingdom of Nabatea. However, they had too much power, and their Roman neighbors to the west didn't like it. It wasn't long before the Romans wiped them out, banishing the Nabataeans to the desert and causing Petra to fall into ruin. It was the end of a civilization that was responsible for the earliest pieces of the modern Arabic alphabet. Hainat died before Nabatea was destroyed by the Romans. Researchers used the bone fragments found in her tomb to create a model of her face. Then, using modern technology, her face was brought back to life with a 3D printer. Sure, a little bit of creativity does go into facial reconstruction, but this is still the first time a person from this lost civilization has been brought to life in such a way. Hinat is now on display at the Hegra Welcome Center in Alula. Number 4. The Bjornstad Ship The Bjornstad Ship is likely the biggest rock carving found anywhere in Northern Europe. It's absolutely huge, standing about 14 feet long and 5 feet high. It was carved into the face of a massive boulder in the countryside of Norway over a thousand years ago. But nobody knows exactly when the rock was carved, or who was responsible for creating it. It's true that the Vikings created plenty of rune stones between the 8th and 11th centuries, but this carving predates the Viking Age. This was an older culture in Scandinavia who took so much pride in their ships that they etched pictures of them onto rock boulders. But who in the world came before the Vikings? Thousands of years before the people we know as the Vikings rose to power, Scandinavia was ruled by semi-nomadic clans. They built ships, they hunted, and they even endured the freezing cold of the northern landscape. But scientists don't really know many specifics about the Nordic Bronze Age. Researchers know basically nothing of Scandinavian culture up until the Norsemen appeared, followed by the Vikings. The Bjornstad ship, created during the Bronze Age, is one of the very few pieces of evidence of the hunter-gatherers and shipbuilders who lived before the Vikings. It was found in 1946 and shows a warship with enough seats to fit 40 rowers. Number 3. Deer Antler Instruments in Vietnam, researchers discovered a pair of ancient instruments made from deer antlers hiding in a museum storage closet. These are now the oldest stringed instruments ever found in Southeast Asia, and they were just collecting dust. They were initially excavated in Vietnam in the 1990s, but nobody realized what they were. The artifacts were stuffed in museum storage and abandoned until scientists stumbled upon them by accident. After a fresh look, it became clear that these were very important relics. We now know the deer antlers were fashioned into string instruments about 2,000 years ago by the pre oc eo culture. This was a powerful group of tribal warriors who thrived in the Mekong Delta starting in the 2nd century BC. They were the ancestors of modern Vietnamese people, and just like other cultures around the globe, they loved music. After conducting several studies, researchers now believe the deer antler instruments represent the earliest chordophones found in Southeast Asia. It's likely the instruments served an important role in rituals and ceremonies for centuries. The instrument was played by drawing a bow across the tight string, not unlike a violin. Only these ancient instruments are more like the traditional kni, another one-stringed instrument crafted from bamboo. Number 2. Ancient Gaza Sarcophagus An ancient sarcophagus has just been discovered in Gaza in shockingly good condition. It dates back 2,000 years to the Roman era and was found in the Gaza Strip, not to be confused with Giza in Egypt. The sarcophagus was part of a huge Roman necropolis that was discovered in 2022. So far, international researchers have identified about 90 individual graves throughout the cemetery but the sarcophagus has garnished special attention because it likely belonged to a very prominent individual. The necropolis could have been used for burying all kinds of people, 
but to be put in a lead-lined coffin was a big deal. Laura Burnett from the Portable Antiquities Scheme says in Roman times, lead coffins were considered a fancy way to be buried. Amazingly, nobody has opened the sarcophagus yet. Scientists placed it inside a protective wooden container and are leaving it to be studied by professionals in perfect conditions. It's a rare opportunity to investigate a fully sealed sarcophagus without cracking it open and exposing the corpse to air for the first time in 2,000 years. Be sure to stay tuned and as soon as we find out what's inside, we'll let you know. Number 1. Rare Inca Tunic An extremely rare tunic was discovered in a grave in northern Chile. According to researchers from the George Washington University, it was known as an uncu, an article of clothing worn during the rule of the Inca Empire. Researchers believe the tunic was worn by a man of great prestige, since such pieces of cloth were typically reserved for imperial authorities. The uncu was held to very specific design standards, which were controlled by the Inca government. It was almost like a government-mandated uniform, but it was a tunic, a simple piece of cloth that's worn around the waist. What's really interesting about this particular uncu is that it was found hundreds of miles from the Inca capital of Cusco. It was found in northern Chile, which would have been a remote part of the empire, absorbed into the Inca realm in the 15th century. This was only a few years before the Spanish arrived and the Inca were destroyed. The tunic is similar to others found closer to the capital, and its style is very much in line with the design standards of the day. But it also shows some subtle cultural features unique to the area. It's an excellent example of just how powerful the Inca Empire was during their prime, and how far their influence extended. Thanks for watching! What was your favorite discovery? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe and come back soon! Bye!